Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 video. So in this one, we're going to check out how you can prepare your PS4 or PS5 to take advantage of any new jailbreaks that come out in the future. If you've missed out on the latest jailbreaks that were just released that work up to 12.02 on the PS4 and up to 10.01 on the PS5, if you're on the latest firmware like 11.40 on the PS5 or 12.50 on the PS4 and you missed out on those jailbreaks, but you want to be able to jailbreak your PS4 or PS5 in the future, then that is what this video aims to show you, is how to get your console prepared for the next jailbreak that may come out in the future. So that is the general idea here. Now, the reason why I'm covering this is that there's been a lot of kind of controversy over these current jailbreaks that we have at the moment, which is that in order to be able to load them, you have to essentially get one of these Japanese-only games, a disc copy of these games, and they're extremely expensive because everybody knows they can be used to load the jailbreak, so they are going up in price, and it's hard to get a copy of one of these games. And because people are on lower firmwares, they're not able to access the free demo versions that can be downloaded from PSN, so they have to get a physical copy to be able to run the jailbreak on their PS4 and PS5. But if you're on the latest firmware right now on your PS4 and PS5 and want to be able to jailbreak it in the future, you can get these free demo versions of the game so that when a jailbreak does come out for your firmware, you'll be able to just load the free demo version to be able to jailbreak your console instead of having to buy one of these physical copies of these Japanese only games, which is overall going to be a much cheaper option. The problem is that these demos like the Hamadashi Creative demo, IX Shitel demo, we also have Jinky Resurrection demo and Fuyu Kiss demo. Uh, these will not show up when you search for them in the PlayStation Store normally. You can see I search Hamadashi Creative and it does not show up. And that is because they're only available on a Japanese account through the Japanese PlayStation Store, which means we have to create a Japanese account on our PlayStation in order to be able to download these demos. So that's what I'm going to show here in this video. So if we go ahead and switch on over to our PS4. Now I'm going to use a PS4 for this, but you can do the same on a PS5 if, as long as you're on the latest firmware so that you can access PSN. We're going to log out of our profile on our console and then create a new user. So we'll select add a new user, create a new user, we'll accept the terms, and then we'll click next to sign in to PlayStation Network. And then once that loads up, we can then tell it to create an account. Now you can create an account online, although I found that to be less stable. It often comes up with an error when trying to create the account on your computer through playstation.com. Tends to be better to just do it on the console itself. It seems to be more reliable this way. So I'm just going to create the account on the console itself. Now, the most important step here is to change the country or region from your normal country or region to Japan. That is what will make this account a Japanese account. So we're going to select country or region, change it to Japan. Unfortunately, on the PS4, this does change the language to Japanese, which uh, does make this a little trickier. We also want to enter a birthday. Just make sure you use your actual birthday, something you remember. So if you have to recover the account in future and it requires that information, you can recall it. So just go ahead and enter a birthday. Make sure it's a, at least over 18. And then once we are good to go, we should be able to get to the next step. So these questions might appear in a different order, but at the moment it is asking for our Japanese postal code. So I'm just going to enter one with six zeros. And then when we click done, it should fill in the rest of the information if you use that postcode. And then we can go ahead and just click the button to go to the next section. And then from here, we're going to then have to enter our email address along with our uh, password for the account. So just enter an email address and a password for the account and re-enter the password. Then click next, then select our avatar picture. Well, I'll just use Clank from Ratchet and Clank. And then we will go to our ID. So this is just your PlayStation account ID. Just enter whatever you want in there. Then it's asking for your first and last name. So you can just enter a first and last name in there and then select the next option. This next option is the privacy policy. So we accept that with the option on the right. Then it's going to ask us like personal privacy setting options. You know, like if you want to allow friends to be able to see your real name and stuff like that. Obviously, you can just click next and just use the defaults. If you want to change it to friends only, you can do so, which is the, the one with the little kind of T at the end, I guess, uh, is the friends only option. So you can customize this and set it to friends only for everything if you want. Or you can just click next and skip these options and just use the defaults if you want to. Then we've got the uh, PlayStation Network terms and conditions, which we have to agree to, which again is the option on the right. And then we should be all good here. 
So we'll get wait for the next set of options. So we'll click OK here. So now it wants to verify our email address. So it should have sent you an email to verify your email address. So in that email, there'll just be a button to click. When you click that button, it will say that, you know, it's been successfully verified, at which point you can then go back on the PS4 or PS5 and then select the bottom option to confirm that you've verified the email address. OK, so now we can just uh, select this option here and then we get a few additional options. Use the option on the left here to skip this step. So it's basically saying to do this later. And then the same for adding a phone number. We'll just say we'll skip this and do this later, which is the option in the bottom left. So now it will ask us if we want to join uh, PlayStation Plus, which we do not. So we'll just go ahead and uh, press circle to back out of this section. We should be all good from here. So that is it. That is the account now created. Your PlayStation Network sign-in information has been saved on this PS4. Obviously, I still have the PS4 set to English. It was just the actual account setup that was in Japanese. So there we go. We should now have our Japanese account. You can see there on TV and video, we've got all the Japanese text there. So now we can head over to the PlayStation Store and it should be the Japanese version of the PlayStation Store, which will have these demos available. So from here, we can go up to the search option and we'll search for the first demo, which is going to be Hamadashi Creative. Now, technically, you only need one of these demos installed. You don't need all of them. Any one will do. However, we might as well just add them all here just to show the different demos that are available. Also, if you want to have like multiple versions of the Lua Loader on your PS4 or PS5, then you could have like a different Lua Loader on each save for each demo, which gives you more options. So you might as well just add all of the demos here. So the other one is IX Tell. So if I type in IXSH, we see it shows up here. I believe it's the top one that we want here, which should be the trial version. So we select that option. And then again, the top option there is to get the trial. So we'll select it and it will start downloading that to our PS4 as well. And then the other one, of course, was Fuyu Kiss, which is F-U-Y-U. So just type in F-U-Y-U and it should show up there. So there it is. That's the one. So we'll select it. And then once again, grab the trial version and get that downloaded to our PS4. And then the final one is uh, Jinky Resurrection. So we'll go back to the search and we'll go J-I-N-K. And that should show up there. So there it is. And again, we want the trial edition. So we're going to select that and select the option to download it. Now, I think one of these games might not be available on the PlayStation 5. So if you're doing this on the PlayStation 5, you might only have three that you can download instead of four. But as you can see there, we've got all of them now downloading. Okay, so once we have them all downloaded here, just to show that this works, I'm going to take one of the modified save files that has the Lua loader on it. And I will import that save file using the application saved data management feature in the settings here. We're going to go to save data on USB storage, copy to system storage, and we're going to go ahead and select our game. So I've already gone and prepared a save here that will work with one of the games here, Hamadashi Creative. So when I go to load this game, just to show that the Lua loader is working, we'll go ahead and load this, give it a few seconds. And there we go, Remote Lua Loader is now running on firmware 12.50, listening on 9026, and I did not have to purchase one of those Lua games, a physical copy. So that is pretty much how you get this set up here. Now again, this is not a jailbreak. This is just a user mode or user land exploit, which can be used to load a jailbreak if a new one comes out in the future. It's just a method of being able to load a new jailbreak but it's not a jailbreak in itself. Yes, there are some payloads I can send, like this FTP server, but that's only going to give me access to sandboxed FTP, so just the contents of things that are running in the app sandbox of the currently running application, and it's not going to give me, you know, root access to the file system, which would require a jailbreak in order to be able to access, um, or, you know, being able to load payloads like the Homebrew Enabler. That requires a kernel exploit, which is what we're missing to be able to jailbreak these higher firmwares. But this is a useful entry point, what is known as an entry point, that can be used to trigger any future jailbreaks that come out for the PS4 or PS5. And the fact that we have that now available on our PS4 at the moment means that any new jailbreaks that come out, we can potentially use this to try and load it in the future. So once you have these demos acquired, you don't need to put the remote Lua loader on it like I did here. That was just a demonstration. You just need to have a working copy of these demos. I would say run each demo at least once 
And then once you've confirmed they're working, you can then disconnect from the internet here on your PS4. I'd also recommend heading down to the settings menu and then going to the automatic downloads section and just make sure that you have everything turned off for automatic downloads. And that's all you really need to do. Just keep your PS4 or PS5 in this state offline with these games being accessible on your console and you should be all good to go. If a new kernel exploit comes out in the future up to 12.50 or 11.40 or whatever the latest firmware is at the time you're watching this video, you'll be able to potentially load that jailbreak in the future once it's available using those free demos instead of having to try and find one of these physical copies of these games and get them imported from Japan, which is going to be much more difficult to find as well as them being extremely expensive. You'll also want to avoid resetting the console at any point. You know, that is one issue with this is that if the console gets factory reset, then you'll essentially lose the licenses for these demos and it will prevent you from running them. So that is one issue, like if your console has some kind of technical fault where it has to factory reset the system in order to get it to work again, then you could lose access to these demos. So going into safe mode and using most of the safe mode options is probably not advised here, especially things like factory reset or installing a recovery firmware will most likely end up removing the licenses or corrupting the licenses that are required for these demos to work. So obviously try to avoid that if you can. So that is the general idea on how you can get your PS4 or PS5 ready for whatever next jailbreak comes out in the future. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.